it came out at a time when something happened that none of us saw coming. This is the crash of the video game industry. And it's legendary. Um, Pitfall, Donkey Kong, all those games made so much money in 1982 that, and Activision was so heavily publicized. I mean, we used to joke, we, we'd write a 2600 game, throw it up in the air, and money would fall on the ground. And obviously, we weren't the only people who figured this out. So when you would go to the consumer electronics show and see the video game companies, there were two of them. There were Atari and Activision. Six months later, we went to the Consumer Electronics Show, and there were 30 of them. There were Atari, Activision, and 28 startups, all funded by VC money. And the way the VC money worked was it's, you're a programmer, make a game. The guy never made a game before. It's all right. You're a programmer. So the market started to get flooded with really terrible stuff. I mean, like, most of it was awful. All these other companies couldn't possibly put as many great games out as they were trying to do because there just wasn't that much video game talent in the world. I mean, at a time, David Crane would come out or I'd go to a trade show and we'd all sit in a room and I would turn around and say, yeah, it's pretty funny. There's probably like 25 video game designers on the entire planet. And we're all sitting here. Yeah, I liked it better when there were 25 video game <laughs> designers. Now there's 30,000 video game designers. But anyway, that's an aside. So the... You know, we saw this at CES, we saw these 30 companies, and we said, oh, that's fine, they'll put out junk, and we'll do great, because we put out good product. Well, we missed a little bit about Business 101 there. We got to Christmas at probably 84, I think it was Christmas of 84. Well, you had games like Pressure Cooker coming out, and Pitfall 2, and Decathlon, and all these great games, and they're coming out at their 40 or $45 price point, like all the games were at that point. And then you had all these other fly-by-night companies putting out games that Toys R Us or Walmart would take them, because they took everything, so they're making a fortune of video games, throw them on the shelf. In the month, they figure out nobody's buying them, or they're buying them and returning them because they're so bad. So the way the system works is they would call the manufacturer and say, this game isn't selling, we want to mark the price down. And that's your only choice with Toys R Us. You don't say no, keep it at full price. They say no, we want to. We're either going to mark the price down, and get rid of them, or we're shipping them all to your house. <laughs> What's the address? So you had inevitably had to say, okay, mark the price down. So the games went from forty dollars to two dollars. And now you would walk into Toys R Us Christmas of '84, and there's a bin in the front of the store, and it has a thousand games in it for two dollars. And you have to go to the back of the store to see Pressure Cooker for $40, Pitfall for $40. And, and you know, the guy buying games for his kid for Christmas never got to the back of the store. Because he said, yeah, he wants Pitfall too, but geez, for the price of Pitfall too, I could buy him 10 games or 15 games and then be the hero. So we didn't see that coming. I actually remember the day I knew it was over. I went into Toys R Us and there were games in the bin that were $1.99 and you had a $2 rebate. So you could make a penny if you bought every one of those VCS games. And I said, this business is really bad right now. So we thought we were going to weather the storm. Yeah, it's fine. No problem. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. Didn't happen. Suddenly, Activision sales went from $150 million down to next to nothing overnight because the, v the, the people that lost out were Toys R Us and Walmart because you couldn't sell all that junk. And they couldn't make any money on it. And basically, when you got to about 1985, Toys R Us and Walmart said, if you ever come into our office and show us a video game, we'll kill you. They don't, video games are gone. They're the CB radio of the 80s. They're a fad. They have run their course. Goodbye. And they got rid of everything. And that was the end of the video game business.